Hello, welcome to session three of our Safe Health Chemicals Conference 2020 on the topic of harmonized information for poison centers. My name is Javier Sanchez and I work for the poison centers team here at ECA. So what you can expect in this session? Well, in this session, we want to give you an up-to-date information on the state of play on the implementation of the poison center requirements. Also, information on the amendments to Annex 8 of the CLP regulation. Also, information on the development plans for our IT tools, best practice for labeling. And in general, we want to give you a very practical information to help you prepare. To achieve this, we have put together a number of presentations from our experts here at ECA, as well as from representatives from companies working on the field. So you have here in the screen the agenda for the full session. First, I will present the topic on the harmonized information for poison centers on the state of play. So this is this presentation. And after my presentation, it will follow my colleague, Claudia Rimondo, and she will talk about the latest developments on our IT solution. We will then have a presentation by my colleague, Kirsi Mürhanen, on the UV code and labeling. Then, Daniel Leape will give you a presentation on the notification obligations, including key information on the latest amendments of the regulation. We will then have two presentations from company representatives. First, one from a representative from RB on the steps to take as industry, and then another one from the perspective of the paint industry. From colleagues from the European Council of the Paint, Printing, Ink, and Artist Colors Industries, CP. And at the end, you will have the opportunity to follow a tutorial or a demonstration on how to prepare a notification for poison centers. And this will be driven by my colleague, Heidi Rasikari. But let me move now to the content of my presentation on the state of play. And starting first with a bit on context of the context on the need to have information for emergency health response. Indeed, on a daily basis, consumers and workers come into contact with chemicals, including hazardous ones. This happens both in our private life when using, for example, paints or glues, but as well in professional environment while using, for example, industrial cleaners or solvents. All these chemicals, uh, obviously, they are expected to be safe when used according to their instructions. However, an intentional exposure can happen, for instance, by ingestion, inhalation, or through skin contact. And this could either be due to accidents or inappropriate use. When this happens, it's crucial for medical staff to have access to key information about the chemicals containing the product in order to choose the right treatment and avoid further damage. This is actually the main task of the poison information centers. And to do their job well, they need to identify the product quickly, know the chemical composition, and then be able to apply the correct emergency measures. This is not uh, something new. The, actually, the role of poison centers in Europe have already a long history. So some might wonder, why do we have now and new requirements uh, as set up under Annex 8 of the CLP regulation. And the answer is simple but very important. It's in the need for harmonization. Indeed, it's all about harmonization. Up until now, there is a significant variation in the national notification systems. Both the information required and the format to provide the data are specific for each member state. This has some consequences. One of them is like companies, they need to comply with different systems and for information that is often very similar. But this also leads to inconsistencies among different member states. Harmonization, therefore, brings improved health response, but also significant cost savings overall to the whole system in Europe. And in a nutshell, when we talk about the harmonization, we are talking about two main things that we are harmonizing. is the same information and in the same format and also having the possibility to use a central portal. I will tell you more about that in the following slides. The European Commission, but also the European Chemicals Agency, and obviously all the member states and the companies in Europe, we are all working towards this harmonization goal. 
And we already have the main blocks in place to make it happen. You have here in the slide the list of things that are already in place for this harmonization. So we have an XML format. We also have defined a European product categorization system. There is a generator that generates the UFI codes needed for the labels. There is scientific guidance in place as well as technical support. And we have also developed the tools for companies to facilitate submission. And we, are, we, we have also developed a poison center notification database for authorities that can be used by appointed bodies or poison centers in the member states. In, in all the countries in the European Union, notifications therefore always have to follow the same harmonized format. However, when submitting the information, companies have in general still two basic options. Companies can either use uh, or submit using the national systems if they are implemented in that country, and we will, I will tell more information about that later on. But this will require preparing as many different notifications as countries they need to be informed. On the other hand, companies also have the, the option to submit using the central system that we have developed here in ECA. And the obvious advantage is that uh, with one notification, the company could cover all the European countries where they need to, to notify their, their mixtures. We are therefore compiling information on the implementation at, um, at the level of the member states. And I would like to share with you the following two slides which give some key details about it. First, in these slides, uh, you have information about the different submission options by, by member states. So here in this diagram, diagram I try to uh, represent the, the different uh, options as we, we know it of today. So you will see the vast majority of member states, 20 at this point in time, they will accept notifications only through the ECA submission portal. You have there the list of the, the acronyms of each of the countries. On the other hand, there are four member states which they will accept notifications through the ECA submission system, but they will also keep the notifications through the national system. So they will they will have they will keep two systems in parallel. And these four countries are Austria, Germany, France, and Portugal, as you have here. Finally, we are still at this moment waiting for the information from six member states, as you have in there. <clears throat> and as soon as we have information, we will publish it in, in our website. But we have also compiled information to help uh, uh, to facilitate the situation for all the companies on the readiness by each member state to accept notifications. At this point in time, it's important to know that only two countries, uh, you have them there, Germany and Estonia, they, ac they accept as today notifications with a harmonized format following Annex 8. The rest of the countries will only accept them as the 1st of January 2021. So by the first compliance date. This means that companies should be notifying through their current national systems for all those countries until 1st of January 2021. We have also compiled information that we think is of interest for companies on additional key topics. For instance, on the languages that where the, the notifications need to be included in, so then the language of the notification, whether there are national fees applying or not in each member state, and the timing when mixtures can be placed in the market. I'm not going to go in details to this information here, but you can check for each of the countries of uh, your interest in our website. You simply need to go to uh, the Poison Center website. You have there the breadcrumb, and then uh, select the key document that you have also in the screen there. It's called Overview of Member State Decisions. I mentioned before that the main blocks for the harmonization are in place, but it's also true that very relevant changes are coming up in the following weeks. The first one of them, or the most important, is the amendment of Annex 8, so amendment of the requirements that need to be included in the notifications. This is because there have been solutions identified for workability concerns, and they will be implemented in this amendment of Annex 8. So the solutions they, they cover a general solution and certain specific solutions. And my colleague, Daniel Eape, in his presentation, will tell you everything about it. 
The solutions here aim to reach a balance, and this is what I try to, to represent with this diagram. They try to reach a balance uh, between the industry bar burden and the need to have effective, effective emergency response. And as I said, my colleague Daniele Ape will later on in, in a different video uh, talk to you about it. In parallel, these changes of or amendments of Annex 8, they also need a modification, certain level of modification in our IT tools. And we are working very hard to have all these critical changes in place before the first compliance date. My colleague Claudia Rimondo in her presentation will tell you all the details about these changes that are coming up in the following months. And finally, there is also important information for you if you are a company with identification obligations to plan ahead for the labeling changes to add the, the UFI. And my colleague Kirsi Mjohanen in her presentation will tell you all about this information. From my side, now reaching the, the end of my presentation. But before that, I would like to remind you once again on the timelines for compliance with the new requirements. You have them there, there in the screen. And they depend, they, are, they depend on the use of mixture. So for consumer and professional mixtures, the compliance date is 1st of January 2021, next year. While for industrial use, the deadline is, uh, the compliance date is January 2024. There is also a transition period, which ends on 1st of January 2025. Uh, so you don't need to notify until then if you have already notified through the current system, unless there are changes made to the system notifications. We have actually compiled or designed a very small video telling about this uh, compliance date. So uh, although I will not be playing it here for you now, you have it here in the screen, and I very much encourage you to, to, to watch it and also promote it in your networks. It will help us to spread the message. With this, I reached the end of my presentation. As a summary, I have focused on the state of play of the implementation of the new requirements for notifications to poison centers. But please keep on watching the rest of the presentations for this session to learn more, including our tutorial on how to prepare poison centers notifications. Thank you very much for your attention.